As usual, we're answering a question today, an important question. And by means of that, because of its importance, we're taking a few things for our own lives from the Word of God. And so someone asked a question and said, Pastor, as part of African culture, as a wife, as part of African culture, as a wife, you are supposed to go to your husband's church. In a situation as a lady, I get married to a person from another church. What do I do as a lady? So as part of African culture, the lady is meant to go to the man's church. So what does she do? Who can help us answer this? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're laughing, <laughs> oh, who can? Some, some By the way, tell someone around you, you look wonderful. You really look amazing. You look awesome. So who can help us provide an answer to this? This lady's asking, what does she do? Obviously, she's not yet married, so she, she, when she gets married, because... I think she's, she's planning to get married to an African. <laughs> so, I, oh, Pastor Sidney, okay, yes, t uh, yes. Please give Pastor Sidney the microphone. She wants to try. And then another person will, will probably see somebody from the back or from the midpoint. Yes, Pastor City, over to you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for this opportunity. God bless. Um, I think the word used, African culture, there is a bit generalized because there are a lot of countries in Africa, more than, more than I think, more than 40 or so. Yes. Yeah, so um, it's a bit generalized because it depends. There are some times where the man actually goes to the ladies' church. Okay. And there are some African cultures where the man is actually the one that gets married into the family. So the kids actually take the woman's surname. Wow. There are some African cultures like that. Uh, For example, in Malawi. Not my own. In Malawi, there's a, there's a culture like that. Yes, definitely not yours. <laughs> but I think it depends on where the culture is. And, you know, for this person um, who's thinking to say... If you are I, talking about Malawi. No, I said, for example, in Malawi, yes. there's a culture like that okay. where the man will go to the ladies' church. The ladies' church. The man will be the one marrying into the family. Okay. And also the children will take the woman's wow. surname. So it depends on... That's why I said the word African culture is really general. General. But if you go to that tribe, that particular place in Malawi, obviously it's not my tribe too, but oh, I know okay. that they do Are you disowning them? Because of their culture. No, but I'm not zoning them. I'm just saying that they also do that. And I know in Zimbabwe there's also a culture like that. Yes. Where's the kidnapping? Where the, they say that the, the ladies, um, the man must go to the ladies' place. Yeah. So that's why it's really, really generalized, yeah. that statement. Yeah. But in terms of them, why? Why are they thinking? Let's start from addressing. Why are they thinking to get married to someone from a different church? Mm -hmm. Because there's, there, Pastor, you've taught us as youths that we need to get from our kindred and from our house. And having said that, and it's in the Bible, it's, mm -hmm. in, it's in the Word of God. So um, having said that, it depends uh, when the people... Um, when the lady was considering getting married to this person, were they already in church? Because some people come to church and they were already in that process. Mm. So I think what I would say to that person is, if they are not yet married and they have not been found um, and they are looking at the state of, uh, maybe they are looking at our church and thinking there's no man that can potentially uh, marry them is that they need to go and mm. win. <laughs> they need to go and win souls. <laughs> they, need, they need to go and win souls. I need to pray that more men come to church, not for them to marry them, but just for more men to come to church. Because you know, it's a general statement that you know, ladies make to say, if I look around, I don't see anybody, or I don't. But maybe they've also gone ahead of themselves to say. 
um, I might not get married in this church, I'll just get married to a different church. So mm. what do I do? I love my church, but I don't also want to leave to go to the man's church. Mm. And now what do I do? So for that person, if they're in the state where they already came, I would advise them to go and talk to their pastor. Mm. And their pastor will better guide them. But right. if they're here and they have not been found, they should go and win souls. Praise Thank God. You. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Very interesting things uh, that you said there. Um, very interesting. The fact where you were saying, get thee out of your kindred and out of thy father's house. Maybe that's the reason why she's thinking of getting thee out of thy kindred and thy father's house <laughs> to a land God will show her. So you never can tell. Uh, who else has some? Thank you so much. That was beautiful. And then the last part you said about speak to your pastor. And that's something to note. Any other dimension to it? Aha! Brother JP has something. Brother JP, you're getting so excellent on the bass guitar. That's so beautiful. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope you don't mind me cheating right now. Uh, that's okay, yes, my dear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I learned that it's actually the man who will actually go to his wife's church biblically. Okay. Because in Mark chapter 10, verse 7, it, sees, it reads, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Uh -huh. And the twine shall be one flesh. So uh -huh. Then there are no more twine but one flesh. So uh -huh. Biblically it says that the man shall go to it. Shall leave. Ah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. You brought a dimension to it. That is scripture. Does anybody have any other dimension that says the woman shall leave? Uh, we've just heard from brother JP that a man shall leave. Is there anyone that says a woman shall leave? Okay, now we're all quiet. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Beautiful. This question is quite an interesting one. And um, the person in the question, you know, it's not really about who shall leave and who shall not leave. For example, you find Ruth. Ruth left her people. So you could also look at that from the dimension of the lady leaving. And then, like Brother JP talked about, the Bible does say a man shall leave. So those were the very words of Jesus. A man shall leave. So it could go anyway. It could go anyway. But what concerns me with this, with this question is that this lady is already concerned about African culture. That's, that's the area that's concerning, the African culture. And there are many people who are like this in the house of God. They are concerned about Zimbabwean culture, Malawian culture, Nigerian culture, English culture, European culture. Australian culture, and there are all types of cultures everywhere in the world. And also you have, you know, when you say culture, you're looking at everything. But then within culture, you have customs. So the unit of culture are the customs, the practices that constitute and sum up to make up this thing called culture. So... My concern is that this person is already becoming concerned about African culture, which takes us into a whole different dimension of things. Hallelujah. In the house of God, there is a culture. In the kingdom of God, there is a culture. And when you get born again, you are born into a kingdom. And in that kingdom, there is a culture. And so from the time you get born again, you start finding out what's the culture, how is the culture, so that you can conform to the culture of the kingdom. Because the various cultures you have in the world, they are beautiful. For example, you find Jesus' body was buried. The Bible tells us his body was buried according to Jewish culture. Okay? So... There, there, there was a culture also. The Jews had a culture, and his body was buried according to Jewish culture. 
Okay? According to Jewish customs as well. So there were cultures, but um, you need to understand that uh, or even Jewish culture was different from the culture that pervaded the environment. There were many similarities, but there was a difference. The key difference between the Jewish culture and the cultures of those who surrounded them was that their culture was centered around God, was centered around Yahweh. And so you find a lot of the names had something to do with Yahweh, Yahweh, it's like in some cultures in the world, you find there will be a tint of the name towards God. Like one I'm, I'm a bit familiar with in Nigeria, they, they call this person Chimezie, Chidis, Nkechi, Chinyere, Chi, Ogechi. Thank you. A good friend of mine is a professor. She's Ogechi. And she watches our services. So, Professor Ogechi, you are most welcome. Ogechi, and all types of chi chi chi. Are there names like that in Zimbabwe? Yes. What is the. How is it like? Nice. Aha, now they are accusing each other. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know, you find the, the culture was tinted around God. Okay? But the same way the Jews prayed, several times in a day. That's also how those you find around them, for example, the Muslims, they pray several times a day. You find the Jews washing their bodies before for different things, you find the Muslims doing the same. So there are, the tinting of the culture was around God. Everything they did, they surrounded it with God. And that's the difference between the Jewish culture and the cultures that were around them, that surrounded them. Okay? Even marriage, etc., there were so many things, there are some areas that are quite similar. Now, that being said, oftentimes the cultures of the world, they are painted after the flesh the satisfaction of the flesh, the satisfaction of the mind. See if you can give me Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. From verse 1. Bible talks about us before we came into the kingdom, before we got into the kingdom of God. It says, and you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, I'm trying to let you know that the, the trouble with worldly culture that has no, no direction after God, no, no godliness in it. So it says, you has he made alive. So before we got born again, we were dead in trespasses and sins, despite the culture, whatever culture we were a part of. The Bible says you were dead in trespasses and sins. So if that culture was able to define what is wrong and what is right before God, you wouldn't be dead in trespasses and sins. But that culture fails. That's why the Bible says you became alive when you were born again, rather than being dead in trespasses and sins. So oftentimes the cultures of the world have their challenges. Where did they come from? Where, were they, or where, where is their origin traced to? Who made them? Let's keep going. Verse 2. It says, where in time past you walked according to the aeon of this cosmos. That's the, the word course of this world. The world translated course, course there is aeon. That means the age, the dispensation, the, the system of the time. So it says the, the aeon of this cosmos. There's usually culture of people usually moves. It's transient. It's based on time. So at a certain time, they are doing this certain thing. Later, maybe a hundred years later, they have readjusted to something else. So it, it moves with the seasons, moves with the time. And it's usually worldly. Okay? So it's, it's based on the cosmos. There are experiences in the cosmos. So somebody says, in this culture, we marry 20 wives. That's my culture. 20 wives is my culture. How, how did they get there? 
when you trace back, there might have been seasons, there might have been times, there might have been, maybe there was a war. And as a result of the war, many men died. Many men were killed. And so you had a limitation in the number of men in that culture. And as a result, every lady wanted to get married. And so they said, okay, you know what, like some years back, I, I'm not too sure if it was Eritrea or one country in Africa, they made it a law at the time. It was a country around that place. I think it was Eritrea. They made it a law that every young man had to marry two wives, minimum. Right? Am I speaking Greek? It was Eritrea, right? Aha. Every young man had to marry two wives. You had no choice whether you answer Christian, Muslim, or Hindu. As long as you are Eritrean, you had to marry two wives. And so some other people who had in their laws one man, one wife, were like, oh, I want to become an Eritrean. They could become promiscuous. You see, so you could have experiences like that, and then they modify the culture to suit the time, to suit the season. Okay, but is that God's plan? Is that God's idea? Not necessarily. So you see, there's a course of this world. So it says you walked according to the course, the aeon of this world. According to the, now it gets a bit serious. It says, according to the prince of the power of the air. So he's talking about there are spiritual influences that determine the culture. The prince of the power of the air. He says, that same spirit now walks in the children of disobedience. So he says, the spirit of disobedience, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience, also functions in this world, in customizing the aeons of this world upon which culture can sometimes be based. Glory to God. So you see, that's the danger. And then it says in verse 3, among whom also we, before we got born again, had our manner of life, our conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh. To satisfy the flesh. Such cultures sometimes tend to satisfy the flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. The things that come out in those cultures, they sound reasonable. They are very reasonable. I mean, a, a man marries 20 wives. I mean, how reasonable is that? That is very reasonable. Isn't it reasonable? No. Okay, to you because you are in the kingdom. <laughs> right? Man marries three, but, uh, you know, his sisters I'm hearing say, gentlemen, isn't it reasonable that a man should marry 20 wives? Brothers. Very reasonable. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, evangelism. Very reasonable. Very, very reasonable. Very reasonable. I mean, control of 20 wives. All right? And, and in some cultures, the man, therefore, has a nice time enjoying himself because everybody's attention is on him. To make sure he has good food, he has everything, you know. Everybody's very protective of him. He's the king in the clan. Then he has like 100 children. He's doing very well. His generation shall reign long after him. Glory to God. So this, it can sound reasonable. There are some cultures you have in a land like this. You know, where you find maybe some people, you know, they say, you know, this is the way of life. This is the manner of life. This is the way we do things here. The question is, who is behind it? Who is behind it? That's the question. Who is behind it? Is it the prince of the power of the air? The spirit that now walks in the children of disobedience? Is that the one behind it? If it's the one behind it, you've got to check it carefully. Check that culture carefully before you subject yourself to it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So this is so important with culture, worldly culture. You need, always need to verify who is behind this culture. Does this culture promote the kingdom of God? Or is the culture against the kingdom of God? You need to find out carefully before accepting it and saying, uh, I'll build my life on this culture. Just because it is culture or just because it's a custom does not make it right. You need to check it out from the word of God. All the time, verify from the word, test, this, test the spirit behind the culture. Examine the spirit behind the culture. Glory to God forever. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah? Very important. Remember, worldly culture, I'll just show this briefly to you, was a part of the condemnation of Jesus Christ to death. That was part of worldly culture. 
It came to a point, give me John chapter 18 from verse 38. Let me show that to you. If it was not for worldly culture, as far as Pilate was concerned, Jesus was not to be condemned to death. And he made it clear. It was very clear. So they brought him in and the Pilate judge said, said to him, what is truth? So Pilate had a conversation with Jesus. And where Jesus talked about, I came to declare truth. So he said, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, the Judeos that brought him and said unto them, I find no, that this is, the, this is the one that has the final say. He said, I find in him no fault at all. He's declared innocent. I find in him no fault at all. So based on my examination, based on my, my look at and my, my, my judgment concerning this matter, I find in Jesus no fault at all. That was his declaration. Then verse 39. Here culture, custom comes in. But you have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. There's a practice. There's a custom. We have a culture. I should release one unto you at the Passover. So I want to bring in culture. Will you therefore that I release unto you? Do you want me to release unto you the king of the Jews? Verse 40. Got their response. Then cried they all again saying, we don't want this man. Based on culture, we make our decision. Our culture says we can't have him. We don't want this man. But rather, our culture will permit us to have Barabbas who is a thief. Now Barabbas was a robber. So they rejected Jesus based on culture. Pilate brought in culture. And so it's always important when you are looking at culture, understand who is behind the culture. Culture can be manipulated against the kingdom. And when you are born again, you are now a part of kingdom culture. Can you say with me, I'm a part of kingdom culture? Absolutely you are. Absolutely you are. 